Okay, I guess I'm ready to do my first piece of homework for beginning that Danny gives us. Um, so I really like the idea of working, starting with a, a layer of color and then just doing a quick rough uh, shape and then defining that. I also really like using uh, background colors. I often uh, make a wash of watercolor. Usually I do watercolors. Um, here's one too. And um, the thing I like about using watercolor washes is um, that it's light and you can sketch on it with color pencil. I think using a watercolor background gives your drawing another layer, quite literally. And um, uh, yeah, I just like to use that. As you can see, I am often using yellows, uh, light washes, and I like using yellows somehow because that just works really well with uh, color pencils. Um, but yeah, um, we can do anything, of course. <laughs> and I, I would really like to, uh, to do something a little bit bolder. Not so long ago, I did this page and it started with just um, a black and white drawing of the asparagus. So these are white asparagus. Then I thought this page needs color. And I was thinking of doing something with green or something with yellow, but I was like, you know what? I'll go for something bold. I'll go for a color that scares me a little bit. So I chose red. I don't know if red is the best approach for um, this drawing, because it's kind of like, Asparagus homicide now, I think. <laughs> Something very bloody. But I, I do like the, the very bright and, and heavy color of red. So what I did for today's drawing, um, I already re uh, prepared a page with red. So uh, red is going to be my uh, base color for the homework. Um, curious to see what it's going to be like, but uh, I'm sure I'll have fun. And for my subject, I will actually be choosing um, not a shoe, but something uh, with a very interesting um, shape. It'll be a cactus. So I'll use my canvas this way, and then I can use a cactus as my subject. Let's do this. I'm using acrylic paint and I want a nice and crisp green to paint my mini cactus. So I mix a basic yellow and blue. Now I'll roughly paint the cactus shape. I really like how the green contrasts with the red background, just like I hoped. It's a good thing I have chosen a fat brush because I feel like putting down a more detailed shape but the point is to just throw down the overall shape so there you have it. For its little plastic pot I'll mix a brown using my three primary colors and make a brown blob that hopefully becomes a more distinct flower pot at a later stage. That needs to dry now. And finally, now it's dried, I can start adding my lines. I'll use a brush pen, just because it's a little bit out of my comfort zone to draw with. Since we're doing scary colors, we might as well use a challenging pen. Now, I should not be distracted by the strokes I made with the paintbrush, because they seem to indicate some overlap that's not there. I try to just focus and look at my subject and how the different shapes overlap and what belongs where. The pen sort of slides over the paint because acrylic paint is quite glossy. 
It's nice, it feels so different than working on paper, which is less smooth. The brush pen is great for thicker and thinner strokes, and I can use its tip for the tiny hairs and prickly needles of the cactus. I like how the paint hasn't quite been applied equally and the red background shows a bit through the green. It mixes into a muddy natural color. Well, now that I have that outline done, I want to add some shading using my Lamy Safari fountain pen. I keep looking at my subject to see where the darker bits are and try filling those in my painting. In the meantime, while doing this, I think about this cactus and why I chose to draw it for this piece of homework. I didn't really think about it that much, I just like its shape and I like how I have a bunch of these to bring some green into my studio and add a bit of life. Those mini cacti look so cute and still I am blowing this one up for this drawing. It doesn't really make sense, but it doesn't matter because I am enjoying myself. Just a few bits of shading here and there to make the surface a little less flat. Some shading to the pot and that's it. Let's bring in this exciting Pentel brush pen with brown ink. That might match the color of the flower pot. The ink flows nicely and oops, I am writing a lot larger than I planned to. I wanted to write Studio Cactus on this side of the cactus, then rotate the sketchbook again and Write a piece of smaller text on the right side of the cactus. Well, I'll just go with the flow now and write the second part below. Now, that leaves me with some space for text at the top when this has dried. To stay in the theme of using unfamiliar art tools, I use this brown ink I have hardly ever used. And I'll write with a bamboo pen which is more like a cool accessory on my desk than it is a favorite tool. I have used it once or twice after seeing Felix Scheinberger work with it, also with brown ink. And Felix Scheinberger, by the way, teaches a class in expressing in sketchbook school. It's all about watercolors and it's really awesome. The ink becomes more like blobs I am dragging rather than pretty lettering I am writing. But now I can't really go back, can I? So I just plow through. Well, I made some poor choices. It's not clear that the text doesn't read from left to right across the page, but is divided in two sections. So I decide to add a frame for each section and hopefully that makes it more readable and logic. Maybe also a line behind the cactus to give it a bit of context. And that line being parallel to the text frames gives a bit of a repeating rhythm, I hope. Okay, I call this done. Sure, the writing could have been prettier and perhaps more meaningful as well. But overall, I'm quite happy with this page and I've really enjoyed the whole process. And that's what this homework was all about, after all. <laughs>